today we're going to talk about uh, optical wireless communication and particularly how chips, photonic integrated chips can help in, in the improvement and, and development of these, these new technologies. And we're talking with uh, Paul van Dijk, he's Vice President of Strategy and Innovation at Lionis International and he's involved in a Dutch flagship project with several Dutch uh, eco uh, photonic integration companies. So welcome uh, Paul. Um, please share your, your project and uh, what you are doing. Okay, so let me click to this one. So what you see here is um, a system that we have been developing in the last uh, 10 years, I think, within the Lyonics International. It's called an optical beam forming network. And what you see in the middle is the bigger chip, uh, which is actually a silicon photonics processor based on silicon nitride waveguides, which we manufacture here in Enschede. And the satellite chips, we have uh, indium phosphide chips, here the laser, here the modulator, and here a photo array of photodetectors, which are manufactured on indium phosphide, a different material uh, by uh, smart photonics and designed by, by effect photonics uh, located in uh, Eindhoven. So this integrated system is a, a beam former for high speed uh, data communication in the new uh, generation telecommunication networks. And we're gonna make this in volume now uh, with other partners under the Photon Delta flagship program uh, for the coming uh, three years. So the promise here is then this is probably what you all recognize the total infrastructure of what we today call 4G, 5G, next generation uh, telecom, which is uh, related to activities here in fiber communication and in wireless communication. And in fiber communication, you have the transceivers based on photonic integrated circuits in the core network and in data centers and the wireless communication you have to your, to, to your smartphone here as, as the end user. But we also see RF communication to the satellite, for example. And everything in this network is controlled by software defined network and the optics in there have uh, wavelengths between 1300 and 1550 nanometer transparent for the, uh, for the optical fiber. And in a radio, we use frequencies typically between 700 megahertz and 60 gigahertz. So this is a complex infrastructure. And what we see now is actually a convergence of a spectrum with the radio spectrum here in frequencies between 500 megahertz and 10 gigahertz and the optical spectrum uh, at terahertz. This picture shows all the bands that are currently used in radio communication. So for radio, for TV, for uh, security, for probing, for satellite communication, you also see a 1G, 2G, 2.5G, 3G, even 5G and higher millimeter waves uh, are, 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 are used in the next generations. What you also see is that the optical spectrum is actually a sister of the radio spectrum, going from millimeter waves to nanometer waves. And the whole capacity of this spectrum is more than 2000 times the total capacity of the radio spectrum. So that's why optical communication is also uh, something that we are looking at today to serve uh, that uh, application with our technology. So coming back to the Dutch photonic integrated circuit ecosystem, we're currently working uh, with, uh, with the eight companies on this project. So TNO in Delft, VTEC, Effect Photonics, Smart Photonics in Eindhoven, Technobis in Alkmaar, and Lyons International, and Fix Photonics Assembly here in Enschede. So that's actually where okay. we're going, Peter. So we want to contribute here to the optical communication with this particular solution. Okay, and I, I understand that you were looking into to use this, 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 this complete product you're developing also in satellites itself, yes. which means it has to be very robust, which is a, a challenge, I guess, for this technology. Is that true or are you? Yes, so the challenge is that we see here, so this is what, what we call a functional model. So we have all the functions in place. We have it assembled, we have it tested, it's technology-wise it is working. But to come from this functional model to an actual product, which is robust, uh, available and still working in harsh environments for 10,000 hours, that is the next uh, challenge that we see. So there we 
we foresee that we need robust assembly, reproducible assembly, uh, and, 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 and more, more processes rather than the technology. But with the technology, we can already do a lot of things and address uh, applications like satellite communication, like next generation uh, beam forming for 5G or 6G or whatever you want to call it. So it's a scalable technology that okay. is uh, very important. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much for this uh, short introduction in your project. You're going to uh, tell together with uh, Martijn Hesch of TNO uh, during yep. the Optical Wireless Communication Conference, October the 5th. Uh, so we will learn more about that as well. Uh, as always, I ask at the end of a presentation a personal question, which is your favorite music, uh, food, uh, whatever. So uh, please share that with us, although I think I know it's all, what it will be. So go ahead. <laughs> yes, well, in fact, we talked about it last year also on the Photonic Integration Conference. And uh, I think we were there together with Peter Harnpna from TNO and uh, Stu. And so, we, and so we have the same hobby being, being, being uh, 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 yeah, inspired by, by drummers and also drumming ourselves. So, so that's, that was good to know. So my background, so how I engaged in that was uh, when I was nine years old, uh, being fed up with the piano lessons and... <laughs> want to do uh, some uh, drumming uh, instructions. Yeah. So uh, my example there was uh, Stuart Copeland of the police at the time, yeah. 1978. So, but uh, more technical drummers are of course there like Steve Gadd, uh, Terry Bozio from Frank Zappa and, and yeah, more. So very okay. excited to, to still play occasionally. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's, that's I think my passion, music and playing okay. drums, yes. Okay, well, thank you very much, Paul. That's in, indeed very interesting because I love drumming as well. But um, thank you for your presentation and sharing your, your, your passion. And uh, look forward to seeing your, your, both your duo presentation uh, at our call. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Peter, for giving us this opportunity. Okay.